So today we have an E1708 with no backlight. Now this is a relatively interesting one because most backlight issues on this device are going to be related to the screen. There's the lovely flex gate issue where the screen cable right down here at the bottom of the display um, gets little cracks in it and then when you open the screen all the way your backlight goes out. So most commonly that's what causes no backlight on these devices. Um, board issues causing no backlights on the A1706, 7, 8 series devices are very rare. I've seen it only a couple times, but here we have a case of a board related backlight failure. So here's how we're going to go about diagnosing this. So if you get a device here, the first thing I want you guys to do, one, make sure it's on, so it is on. So you're going to want to check backlight output voltage. Backlight output voltage is going to show up on these caps right here. So let me show you guys where to measure for this. So backlight output voltage is going to be right here at the bottom on these series of caps. So put one lead on one side, one on the other, or one on ground, whatever. That's what we're going to do right now. And we're going to see what voltage we get. So if you get 54 volts, or 50, or 45, whatever, your issue is the screen. So it is not the board. Do not mess with the board. I've had people that have went high and low replacing... Um, everything in the circuit only to find they have a bad screen. Don't do that. Measure first. So we have zero volts. So zero volts can also mean a bad screen or it could mean that something's up in the circuit like a short. So the next thing I want to check, typically if you have a board issue with backlight, you're going to have a shorted backlight output line. So to ensure accurate measurement, we're going to go ahead and discharge the backlight output caps by just getting a pair of tweezers and discharging them. Simple enough. So we're going to check for a short. We're going to put our meter in um, ohms mode or tone mode. And we're going to check for a short. And what do you know? That's the ground side. This is not the ground side. 110 ohms to ground is way too low for a circuit that outputs 50 volts like this. So we know we have an issue. So most likely we're going to have an issue with a capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and pull this board out, have a look, and see if we could find the uh, shorted capacitor or shorted circuit or whatever shorted on this board. All right, our motherboard is out of the enclosure and it's relatively unremarkable. There's not really much of anything that I see. The caps look fine. However, usually they will look fine even if they're shorted. Um, so I think the best method here is just to inject a little voltage and see what gets hot because it looks fine. I mean, the backlight circuit looks fine. There's no holes in the chip. A lot of times you'll get the, um, the uh, backlight driver that just blows out and then you'll you'll see it visibly and there's nothing like that here that's from when I discharged the cap my tweezer slipped so we're gonna go ahead and inject um, some voltage it's a high voltage line so we'll, we'll just do something crazy like 10 volts and we will see what happens so let's go ahead and get that soldered so we're going to plug in our uh, DCPS leads and solder a wire to the backlight output This plugged in. Put the right one on ground and the right one on positive. Wouldn't want to reverse them. Probably wouldn't be too good for my power supply. Okay, so it looks like I believe. Let's double check. So we're just gonna see this side I believe is gonna be the output side. Let's see. Yeah, that's output, and that is ground. So we are going to solder a wire to the output side. Easy enough. Let's move this over here. So I'm just going to get a little solder. You know, I don't really need to explain this because I'm sure you guys know. We're just going to solder a wire here. We don't really want to bridge anything other than the caps because that's not really going to matter. Just like that. And now what we're going to do, connect the other side to ground. And we're going to get our FLIR and have a look. So let's clip this onto ground, a nice good spot on ground. And we're instantly pulling 5 amps. And you can see, I don't even need FLIR. You can see it's that cap right there. See that? 
now actually you can see the crack in that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a crack in that capacitor. You can see like the stuff in the center is starting to leak out. It's pretty cool. You could actually see the crack because it got so hot. Crack right through the center and the history on this device is a drop. So drop your device, you can count on this happening. Well, you can't count on it, but typically when dealing with devices with drops, most technicians will say, oh, it's a solder joint somewhere. No, very rarely is it a solder joint. I mean, I'd be lying if, it, if I said it didn't happen, but it's more than likely not a solder joint. More than likely, you're gonna have an issue with a ceramic or tantalum capacitor that was fractured internally from the drop that is now causing a short. So that capacitor just became a wire basically, not a capacitor anymore. And then you will get a short like we see here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these caps and then um, we should have a working board. So let's get our hot air on, 430. So here's a question. Should you replace all of them? Uh, no. We're gonna replace this one, this one, and this one. Simply because it might have gotten hot. So we don't want to use anything that could have gotten hot. So, like if this whole area was burning hot, we don't want to deal with that. But we should be fine otherwise. So, let's put some fresh leaded solder down. Actually, we're going to wick this because I, I don't want a lousy joint given how these caps are a little bit heavy and it would just be better in that way. Okay, so just wick all this away. Put a little bit of solder down on these pads. Well, as on that one. Okay, we have our new caps. That one just ran away. Okay, we'll grab another one. Stay, little capacitor. I know. Yeah, you really don't want to stay, do you? I, I get it, it's a MacBook. I wouldn't want to be on a MacBook either, but you have a job to do. These things are annoying. Some are harder than others to grip just because of the they're kind of awkward to hold. And then you get the air that tries to blow it away. But flux down yeah this is what I mean These are a little bit ugly, so we're going to put a little bit more flux. I'm not going to ultrasonic this board. There's no liquid. There's no need. So I'll just use my my um, Q-tip and alcohol to clean it up. Perfectly fine to do. But I do want these to flow into place nice. Just like that. Perfect. We're done here. We could clean up a little bit. Now, you don't really want to just put cold alcohol onto the capacitors, especially since they're ceramics. So we're going to clean over here first, and then we'll work our way over here. So we're just going to get most of the other stuff. And then once that's cooled down a little bit, which it already is now, we could start cleaning near them. Just don't want to risk a chance of them cracking again.
typically a little bit of flux is fine, but I like I everybody that watches this channel knows I just don't like to leave flux on the board. I just I just don't like it. Because when I see if you send me a board with flux on it, I'm gonna judge you. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna judge you. Because you don't leave flux on a board before sending it to me. Same reason why I don't want flux on a board when I give it back to the customer. Heck, even the most a lot of Apple reefer boards I see now have flux all over them. It's not really a functional thing, it's just a cosmetic thing. It's a pride in work thing too. You know, I don't want to hand a customer something back that has junk all over it. I used to do that when I was starting, and I've had boards come back because the flux led to a little bit of corrosion, which technically flux doesn't corrode. What happens is moisture builds up in the flux, and it corrodes whatever's underneath it. So that's where your issue comes in, not from the flux itself. It's from the little bit of moisture that's going to build up into it, which is just going to happen. So you could have a no-clean flux, you could have all that, and eventually you will get a little bit of moisture that will build up, especially if the device is in a humid environment, and then you will get a device that does not work from corrosion. So your mileage may vary, but consider cleaning. And that's good enough. Okay, let's go ahead and test it. All right, our board is back in the enclosure, and... We should get an Apple logo here very shortly. And there we go. We have an Apple logo and we have a fixed backlight. So I hope this video helps you solve your problem. If you are to encounter one of these devices with no backlight, remember it's probably the screen. But if not, check the backlight circuit like we just did and you will have a fixed uh, MacBook. So thank you for watching and that's uh, all for today.